Aren't you going to preach? No? Oh, you did preach last Sunday. Yes, and you sounded very convincing. I told Deacon Chris. Uh, it's because I wasn't here last Sunday. I was somewhere else, out of state, and uh, obviously I went to church. It's always fun when you go to other churches because you get to see how other people are celebrating. Um, so before the Mass begin, you hear this noise. Click, 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 click. It's all the walkers coming in, one after another. Then the Mass began. It was celebrated by a classmate of mine, Thomas. He's a friend of mine, so I can say it. Um, he has this sleepy voice. When he started preaching, some lady, what did he say? <laughs> she was louder than he was with the microphone. And then I did something I've never done as a priest. I fell asleep during his homily. So. <laughs> if you feel you're falling asleep, throw something at me, okay? We never want this to happen to anyone. Thank you for being here today, joining us in prayer. So I'm going to put you to sleep right now. Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. Time is running out, St. Paul reminds us. And as we have been living our lives, it seems that time is going faster and faster and faster. We are so busy and preoccupied with so many things, there seems to not be enough time every day for all the things that we wish to do. So what is so essential that takes priority in our lives? Do we have enough time to accomplish what someone else would want us to accomplish, our loving God? It is our faith that brings us here today in prayer. And that priority needs to guide every step of our lives. And things will get in the way, events, other people, some of whom will come our way not so peaceful, others will be angry at us, some will be hostile. There might even be the evil ones, all of that is coming our way, and somehow we have to manage within the time frame to continue on this beautiful journey to God's kingdom. There was a little boy, his name was Johnny. Johnny had a temper issue. Every day he would be so angry, he would take it out on his mom and his little sister. Does that happen to little ones? Hey, kids, do you ever get angry at your mom? Take it out on your sister? I hope not. So it lasted so long that his mom could no longer take it. And she said to Johnny, listen, you're making it very difficult for other people to love you. Johnny thought about it long and hard. He then went outside, built a mound out of dirt, traced a big cross on the mound and put letters R-I-P, which means what? Rest in peace. His mom looked at this. Johnny, what is this? And Johnny says, this is the grave of the old Johnny. He died. This is the new Johnny. I'll be nice from now on. Oh, it lasted a couple days. Eventually, Johnny went back to his old ways, got angry one day, started arguing with his sister, hit her a number of times, she started crying. And his sister went outside, went to the alleged grave of old Johnny, erased R.I.P., and wrote, he is not here, he has risen. And this is what happens to all of us, not just to little Johnny. We all have our old habits. They keep on rising. We keep on dying to old selves, and yet it's so difficult to renew our hearts, our minds, our souls, and continue on because we make it difficult for ourselves and other people don't make it any easier. That's where our faith comes in. Beware, the time is running out. We only have so much time. 
entrusted to our care. People have always seeked the change, the reconciliation that requires a major effort on our part. People of the old as well as the new age continue to struggle with this. Today's first reading reminds us of people in Nineveh. Nineveh was a beautiful and powerful city, the biggest city in the Assyrian Empire on the banks of Tigris River. Today's city, Mosul in Iraq, is built around the ruins of the old ancient city, Nineveh. Jonah was called by God to go and proclaim repentance to the people of Nineveh. Here's the problem. Jonah didn't want to go because he had a reason. Assyrians despised the Jewish people. So here's Jewish Jonah is supposed to go and tell the Assyrians, people in Nineveh, you must repent because your city will be destroyed in 40 days. You think they would listen? They actually did. In less than a day, they changed their ways. They turned themselves around and God did not destroy Nineveh. A beautiful story of repentance from the Old Testament. And through the ages, people have experienced a change of heart as individuals, as communities, even as nations. As followers of Jesus, we challenge ourselves every single day to experience the change, to experience the forgiveness that God is always willing to to offer to us. Today's gospel is a beautiful reminder to each and every single one of us how it happened at the beginning, Jesus calling Peter and Andrew, James and John, and then eventually so many others to follow in his footsteps. So they dropped whatever they were doing, fishing nets, their father behind. They died to their old self only to be reborn in a new way, in a new capacity, to obtain a new life, not just in this world, but the promise of eternal life. This is our challenge and our call. For a long time, our Lord and Savior has been walking our lands and calling each and every single one of us by name. From the day of our baptism, we are challenging one another to renew our hearts, renew our minds, our families, and our communities to continue on this beautiful journey as we die to old selves and propose before God our new self, a better person, a better Christian, a better child of God. So today we consider our time. It is running out. But yet, as we receive the gift of the Eucharist, we nourish our very existence with one another. Before our loving God, we once again claim our change of heart and continue on so that no one can ride on our old self grave. He has risen, he is not here, that God will one day ride for each and every single one of us in his eternal kingdom. He or she has risen in my eternal kingdom. Amen.